What if I told you that this carousel was built with CSS only? Even though we clearly have working buttons that scroll the content, there's no JavaScript here. In fact, I didn't even use much HTML code either. There are no buttons in HTML. And the thing is, to pull this off, I had to combine some of the craziest modern CSS features, like anchor positioning, scroll snapping, and the brand new scroll button feature, which are all going to be explained in this video. If we haven't met, my name is Fabian and this is coding to go the channel where you learn the most relevant coding concepts in just a few minutes. As I said, all you need in HTML is just a few cards within a carousel. That's it. In CSS, we just have a simple flexbox layout and a gap of 1 EM to display them side by side. But having that many cards, we can see how they get squeezed to fit on the screen. So on the cards, apply a flex of 0, 0, 20 EM to make sure that the cards don't grow and don't shrink and they're always 20 EM wide. Now that will automatically make them overflow the screen. So we have to scroll the entire page horizontally to see them. That is the basic starting point we need to turn this into a carousel swiper. Because we don't want to scroll the entire page. Instead, we only want to scroll within the carousel container. So let's limit the size to 100% and apply overflow X auto. That will make it scrollable. But instead of using this ugly scroll bar, I want to use scroll buttons on the left and on the right side. So why don't we just remove the scroll bar using the WebKit scroll bar pseudo class and define display none. Now to the exciting part. How can we create a button in CSS only? For that, address the carousel and write colon colon scroll button. This is a new pseudo element in CSS. The browser support is still limited, but you will definitely want to use it in the future. In the parentheses, you control the scroll direction. You can use up, left, down. We want to scroll right. Use the content property to control the text on the button. For example, right or next, or simply write an arrow to indicate the direction. All the other styles work the same as for any other HTML element. So that's totally up to you. I will change the colors, change the font, and make it a 60 by 60 pixel circle. And since the content is text, I have to add a padding bottom to center it properly. Now only the positioning aspect is a bit more difficult. How can we get the button exactly where we want it to be? This requires another modern CSS concept called anchor positioning. I will show you this in a minute. But right now, let's see what happens when I click the button. Bam! The container scrolls instantly. No animation, no flow. Let's improve that with one simple line. On the carousel, say, scroll behavior, smooth. There we go. This is much smoother. Now to get a button that scrolls to the left, we have to do the same thing again. But this time, use left in the parentheses. Here, the content is an arrow to the left. All the other styles should be the same. So let's simply copy it into the selector up here, so that all the styles apply for both buttons. Only the styles that should be different for the button left can be overwritten down below. Now all of that should give us two buttons that we can use to scroll the container. And a cool thing about this is that these buttons will automatically disable themselves if they reach the end of the scrollable content. You see, when I have no styles applied, the button left is grayed out and it's not clickable. The same thing happens for the button right when I reach the end of the container. Because there is nothing to scroll to, so the button should be disabled. The cool part is, you can also start the buttons in this disabled state. For that, just use the disabled pseudo class. So it's great to have one default design, which we already defined, and then one where the buttons should be in their disabled state. Here, I simply lower the opacity and change the cursor to auto. That way, the button will become slightly transparent and it looks disabled. That will communicate it best to the user that this button is disabled. Perfect. But one thing that is a bit annoying is that we cannot quite control the scroll distance of how far we're actually scrolling. Right now, when I scroll with these buttons, the scroll distance feels random. Sometimes we're even stopping between two cards and it overall doesn't feel great. And luckily, there's a way how we can improve this slightly. But before we get into that, let's quickly position these buttons properly. I want to have them on the outer edges of this carousel. But for some reason, this is not as easy as you might think. My first instinct was absolute positioning, of course. And then use position relative on the carousel and use the top and right properties to position the button. At least, that's how you would do it with before and after pseudo elements. But with scroll buttons, I cannot position it relative to the parent element. So right now, it positions itself relative to the entire website, which is not useful. What we have to use instead is called anchor positioning. This is a modern way of positioning elements in CSS. First, we have to define an anchor name on the parent, which is the carousel. Let's call it dash dash carousel. The name has to start with two dashes, just like custom properties. Then, on the styles for both buttons, let's use position fixed and use that anchor name we just defined on the position anchor property, dash dash carousel. Now both buttons will be positioned relative to the carousel, 
That means we can now use the position area property to define where exactly the button should go. This property allows us to position the element on nine distinct places within the anchor parent. The first value is for horizontal positioning and the second one for the vertical position. I want it on the right center. On the button left, I use left center. Now these buttons are almost where I want them to be, but I prefer to make them overlap with the edge of the carousel. So I use the translate property to move it by negative 50% of its own size. And on the button left, translate positive 50%. Great. Now to make it perfect, let's adjust how far the carousel will scroll on click. And the annoying thing is that right now, it is not possible to control the scroll distance. We cannot say scroll only one card or scroll exactly three cards. And I think they should add this eventually in the future. But the situation is not entirely hopeless because there is one stable solution we can use to improve at least one aspect of the scroll distance. It is called scroll snapping, which means defining a snapping point where the scrolling should stop if the scrolling endpoint is close to that snapping point. That way, we never stop in the middle of a gap or weirdly hide the starting part of a card because we can define those snapping points exactly at the beginning of each card. Here's how to do that. On the carousel, define scroll snap type x mandatory. That defines how strictly the snapping point should be enforced. The value x is simply because we're scrolling horizontally. And mandatory means it should always snap to the next card when scrolling. Now we have to go to the child elements that are being moved on scroll. So let's go to the cards and define their snapping point using scroll snap align. We always want to snap at the start of a card. Having defined that, the scrolling will now stop perfectly at the start of one card. Without it, it will stop wherever it wants, which can look weird. Now the next cool thing about those CSS-only carousels is that we can also create those quick links below a carousel, which will get us to a certain scroll position. It also shows the current position, which is quite cool. But before I show you how to do that, let's make the swiper perfect by making it responsive. On a smartphone, it would be best to just show one card at a time. I don't want the next card to be cut off weirdly. Instead, we should simply resize the card and make it bigger or smaller depending on the screen size. For that, let's use a media query for mobile screens and adjust the CSS code for the cards. Earlier, we used a flex of 0020EM. Now let's change it to 00100% to stretch the entire width. That way, the card adjusts to the screen size. It's always 100%. And if this was an image or something where you don't want to mess with the dimensions, I would recommend to use the aspect ratio property instead of setting a fixed height. That way, when the card resizes on mobile screens, the height will adjust accordingly to keep consistent dimensions. Now let's finally talk about scroll markers, which are these small little circles that indicate the current position. Let's add this feature by defining a scroll marker group on the carousel. On this property, we can define whether they should come before or after the carousel. Let's say after. The scroll marker group is the parent container that holds all the markers. To start it, address the carousel, colon, colon, scroll marker group. Here, we simply use display flex, justify content center, and gap of 0.5 EM to have them side by side. But we can't see them yet, as we haven't created the scroll markers. Now, very importantly, on the cards, you create the colon colon scroll marker. The content is empty, height and width of 1 EM, give it a background color and a border radius of 50%, and that will create the scroll markers on the website. The cool thing is that, of course, we don't need any JavaScript. They already work perfectly when you click on them. To highlight the current position, address the card, scroll marker, and then use the pseudo class target current. Here I simply change the background color, for example. Perfect. We now have a fully functioning CSS only carousel. But here's something cool you can try next. What if elements on your page could animate as you scroll, for example, making text fade in or images slide into view as the user moves down the page? I show you exactly how to do that in my Intersection Observer video. You can check it out right here. My name is Fabian and this was Coding2Go. I will see you in the next video.